Gillingham, match preview, take two. Action. Is it recording? Are we, are we good? Midweek action for Blackburn Rose as they head down to Priestfields to take on Bradley Dax's old boys, Gillingham. Again. Talk about that match and more in today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview, this time looking ahead to some midweek action where we take on a 16th place journey. We'll talk more about that match in just one minute, but if you're new, Hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. So that's right, folks. We do head back down to the Priestfield Stadium one more time to take on Gillingham. Hopefully, no beast from the East will disrupt this match. So let's take a look at the other match in a little bit more detail. It will take place Tuesday, the 10th of April, 2018. Last season, Gillingham finished 20th in the league. They are currently doing themselves a little bit better in 16th place. The current top goal scorer according to the BBC, is Tom Ease with 13 goals. And the key man pulling the strings is Steve Lavelle. He actually took over from another, another manager earlier in the season, and his name has slipped my memory. Now, over the years, the two sides have met 10 times, with Gillingham winning just the one of them, uh, Rovers winning six, and the two sides have drawn three apiece. As for the last five times that these two sides have met at the Priestfield Stadium, the results look like this. In fact, Rovers coming into this unbeaten in five. The last result was back in 2009, uh, 25th of August. In fact, in the League Cup, Rovers winning 3-1. Before that was a 1-1 draw in the Old Division 1. That was the last time we were relegated from the Premier League uh, division. I think it was under Graham Souness. Uh, it was a 1-1 draw. The result before that was a 2-1 win in the League Cup. At the top of the shop there was a 1975. It was a 1-1 draw in the Old Division 3. So how will the teams line up? Let's first and foremost take a look at the hosts, uh, Gillingham. Uh, I have Holy and Goal, Irma, Zaku, Zakwani, Nugent, Wagstaff, Hessenthaler, uh, Byrne, Garmston, Musa, Eves and Wilkinson. Let's take a look at the statistics for Gillingham. Eves, top goal scorer, according to Sky this time, with 14 goals. Parker has 11, Martin has 6, and Byrne has 4. Into the discipline. Erm has 11, Yellows, Byrne has 10. Eves, 9. Wagstaff with 6. Into the Reds. Martin, top of the shop there, with 2 red cards. Eves, 1. Irma has 1, and Wilkinson has 1. As for the last 5 fixtures, or the last 5 results for Gillingham, they come into this with a bit of a topsy-turvy kind of form last time. They were held to a 0-0 draw at home to Doncaster. Before that, they were on the back of a 4-0 defeat by Southend on the road. Uh, before that, they suffered a 2-1 defeat at home to MK Dons. 25th, 24th of March, they uh, lost to Bradford City. But all the way back on the 10th of March, they were victorious up against G uh, Portsmouth at Fratton Park. How about Rovers? How are they going to line up? Well, I've gone for... Uh, this formation, which is a 4-3-3, Ryan Ringold, Bennett, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Evans, Dak, Smallwood, Armstrong, Conway, and Graham's pretty similar to the starting eleven that uh, won out against Southend on the weekend. The only change being Lenahan in the back four. Uh, hopefully Dak is back because uh, obviously you guys must know about my gripes with... Uh, with pain because he is, is really starting to frustrate me a little bit, but that's the story for another day. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics for Rovers. Current top goal scorer, according to Sky, is still Bradley Dak with 17 goals. Danny Graham's knocking on this door, though, with 16 goals. Mulgrew uh, is in third with 12 goals. Still not bad for a centre-back. And then Armstrong's in there with four in fourth place with nine goals. As for the discipline, Small was there with 10 yellows. He picked up a yellow at the game against Southend. Bennett's there with eight. Evans with seven, and Williams with seven. As for the Reds, Bennett still tops the pops with two Reds. Samuel and Lewis Travis with one Red. As for the last five fixtures for Rovers, Rovers come into this on the back of four straight wins. Uh, last time out, they were they beat Southend United at Ewood Park 1-0 before beating MK Dons 2-1 uh, at their place. All the way back on the 29th of March, under the sky cameras, 2-0 winners over Bradford City at Ewood Park. And back on the 10th of March, Rovers pulled out 3-0 winners again at Ewood Park. And all the way back... 4th of March, we were held to a 2-2 draw with 2nd place Wigan. 
as we edge closer to kickoff, let's take a look at the current state of play for the last eight matches. Uh, who, who is top of the form table in regards to home matches and where are Gillingham? Well, Rovers currently find themselves in third place behind Plymouth and Rotherham. These are the last five matches. Obviously, Rovers are winning five of them, uh, drawing three of them. As for Gillingham, they sit right in the middle of the table in 14th place at the last eight matches. They won two, they've drawn five, and they've only lost one. So that's a little bit of an interesting statistic. Hopefully, Rovers can make that uh, a second defeat for Gillingham. As for the last away, uh, the last eight matches away, Blackburn topped the pops here with uh, five wins, two draws, and just the one loss. And I think that one loss was all the way back against Plymouth. I'm not sure of the date. So let's take a look at the run-ins for the three sides battling out for promotion. First and foremost, the leaders, Blackburn Rovers. First up, we got to take on Gillingham, which is why we're here. Uh, and then we have a tricky, another tricky away tie up against Bristol Rovers. Now, Bristol Rovers currently find themselves in 10th spot. So I've circled that as a potential banana skin as our next home game when we take on uh, Peterborough under the sky cameras, it looks like. And that is another midweek match against uh, Peterborough still ch uh, battling out for a playoff spot. Then we take on Doncaster at their place. And then we take on Charlton at the Valley before wrapping up the season at home to Oxford United. And that is a 5 o'clock or 5.30 kickoff on Saturday the 5th of May. How about second place Wigan? Well, they've got a couple of tricky ones back to back. I think they take on Rochdale midweek. And Rochdale are battling for their lives down at the bottom. I think they need a win to get themselves out of the drop zone. Then they take on Rotherham, who are battling themselves for a playoff spot. It looks like they're, they're, they're doing okay in regards to playoffs. But I think a win should seal the deal for them. Towards the back end of the season, they've got to take on Wimbledon again, still scrapping for their lives. So three real tricky ties. How about Shrewsbury? Well, they've just lost. Uh, word has it that they just lost to Lincoln in the Czech trade uh, Mickey Mouse Cup at Wembley so they will be taking on Bradford under the sky cameras that's a, that's, despite Bradford's recent run of form it's a tough game going to Valley Parade and I expect to be honest with you I don't expect Shrewsbury to win I'm not expecting them to lose but I expect it to be you know a bit of a tough encounter then they take on Charlton Athletic at uh, at home and Charlton are battling them out themselves for a playoff spot. They've also got to take on Peterborough. And like I said, they are also duking it out for a playoff spot. And they'll wrap up the season up against Milton Keynes. So who could be at a win or bust scenario uh, with themselves in the relegation match. Now you've heard a bit what I've had to say about the match. What did the gaff have to say in an extended talking heads shortly after the final whistle against Southend? They can be. I think it was obviously nervous towards the end. I'd like to give a mention to the fans for getting us through that last bit really encouraging us on and making sure that we uh, got over the line there was a few of them at the end of last season tight one nils and you do need your fans to to raise the volume just so the players can get that extra bit they can throw their body in front of something they can make a block they can get a contact from a corner before somebody has a free header so together we got over the line it's, it's great put the points in the bag in what was a, a difficult game for us and yet um, it's ticked off now Put it in the annals of history and move on to the next game. I think so. I think so. I think um, you know we have to grind them out if we can. We've had some brilliant games where we've been scintillating at times, and then there's, there's going to be days when it doesn't quite flow as well. The fluency of the team's not there, but you have to grind them days out. And and over recent weeks we've been doing that. You know, it's um, the wins have been you know coming at an impressive rate. Some of them have been clinical and good, and others have been tight. But we're finding a way at this moment to win football matches. Yeah, I think so. We talked about the half time. That's you know the game would loosen off a little bit, and um, and I did talk about if we get the first goal, let's not sit back on it. And yet credit to them, they had you know they had a lot of strikers on the bench as well, and changed a lot of forward thinking players on, and gambled a little bit. And I just thought we could have scored the second goal, picked the right pass, stick Armstrong away to run Samuel. We put on to do that as well. So just to, as they were pushing on, leaving man for man, just to pick the right pass, and we'd have scored a second just with all that space that they'd left. But it didn't quite happen for us. Um, but let's let's not worry too much about that. That'll be it for another day, and and let's put the points in the bag. Eighty-five points, you know, twenty-five wins this season. We and still haven't achieved anything. It's we just have to keep going, keep grinding it. Shrewsbury obviously got a cup final tomorrow. We're going to win today. Um, let's keep going. Yep, yeah, and Craig's been kicking his heels for a few weeks now. You know, it's, I've had a few conversations with him. It's you know, there's been certain games where I've just wanted to place four strikers, really, Kelton Bradley and that, and wanted to go and try and blow teams away. And, Today, you know, I, I looked. I think Cork is a good, good left back. He picks the right pass. He passes the ball well from the back for them. I, I just wanted to 
put a more attritional, knowledgeable, hard-working, honest professional on that side of the pitch. I've also talked to Craig about end product. He has to, if he's going to play regularly, he has to score goals and create goals. And he and he did that today. He created a great great ball in the box for Danny. And um, you know, great credit to him that he's been so professional in the period he's been out of the team after coming back from injury and. And that's why you know they're important for this football club. That the good pros doing the job, and then when their chance and opportunity comes, they grab it with both hands. Correct. You know, it seems a long time ago that Danny was sitting on the bench kicking his heels. At, um because you know he he is proving that he does what he does really. And, and I think we've done a lot of work on areas. The goal today was a classic case. If you'd speak to any of the boys at work, that we work on off the back of the second centre half, just dropping it over his head and Danny can just stand there and wait really. As that happened today, Craig put a perfect ball in and Danny just finished it off. And so, um, happy enough, let's keep going. Uh, you know, it was a, oh, take a big breath, but there's no need to worry too much about it. Let's just move on. The next game will look after itself and uh, we're looking forward to getting back on the road. Um, you know, two long trips, I would have to say, coming up now to Gillingham and Bristol, but we shouldn't fear them. We should be looking forward to them and, and go and impose ourselves on their matches. I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I, it, we've had a few of them this year and they end up in the back of our net more times than not. And um, and we'd have been talking about frustration and disappointment now, I think. But um, for whatever reason it didn't go in, I, I see it as a good omen for us. Um, we'd have to say they worked hard enough to probably take a point out of this game, I, I think, today. And yet, there's no sympathy for them. They, they, they don't need it. They're sitting pretty comfortably in mid-table. Um, they show that they're at home. And Chris has got them really hard working, honest, and um, they made life really difficult for us. So we needed the points more than they did today. And, and, and I'd say the defenders put their lines on the, put their bodies on the line. They blocked it. They got rid of it in the end, and um, and we got the points. And that's all that matters. Well, it is a, it's a disappointment because you know Bradley can make the difference in a game. I would have to say, I used to say that with Bradley on the pitch, he wouldn't have picked the right pass, broke away, scored a goal himself when there was space there in the second half for us to exploit. Um, how is he? It's just uh, we took him off as a precaution, really. I think once you start feeling your hamstring and you've got tightness and fatigue in there, you the first sprint, the first burst away from somebody is a chance he could tear and he could miss the rest of the season. So. I think it's better he took him off. We'll assess him tomorrow. Um, you know, he, he'll want to play against Gillingham, which we, we'll have to assess that, and uh, we'll, we'll know more tomorrow when we have a look at him. Now, you've heard what the captain had to say, even a little bit what I've had to say. What have the fans been saying on social media? Well, to be honest with you, not much is going on because everyone's still talking about the South End game. But over on the BRFCS forum, there are a few comments, and here is one of them. Blue Fred said this should continue the great run of form where we're on down here without too much trouble as long as we stay focused. The final six games, come on, you blues. Tom said this not sure if it's a blessing or a curse being before Shrewsbury play again. On the one hand, a win turns a screw and puts the pressure on them going to Bradford, but if we fail to win, they know they can close the gap right down again. Had enough said this, not sure Dak will make this, as all the injuries that are not as bad as we thought seem to keep players out for two or three weeks. We'll have an inkling into the, his thinking with who plays Monday night for under 23s at Leyland. I think it will be same again as Saturday with Payne for Dak and Lenehan for Downing, if fit. Uh, Gavilar Somerset said this. Uh, he's quoted uh, Darrell Enhan. Good to get through training today. Ready for Tuesday now. If fit, he has to start. Harsh on Downing, but Lenehan is too good not to start. As for Big Dog Steel, he's quoting that uh, fella just now. Downing has done great. He's probably due a rest. I wouldn't be against rotating things a bit on Tuesday. We can't expect the same 11 to start every game in April. Time for the squad to step up. As for Tyrone Shoelaces said this, if Dak isn't fit and he probably have to be 100% for me to be risked, Payne gets another chance to make a name for himself in that role. Playing away, he may get more space if he's ineffectual. After 45 minutes, I suggest we move Bennett there and play Travis at right back. It's a shame Gladwood isn't match fit as he's a better player than Dak in his head. No point risking Dak if there's any doubt at all. A reoccurrence of this injury could be the end of his season and it could give us a right big blow should uh, should he get injured and get ruled out because basically he is the linchpin of our midfield and our attack. Now you've heard what the fans have had to say, you've even heard what the gaffers had to say, and you've even heard a little bit what I've had to say, but to be honest with you, forget it. Put it in the back of your mind because what really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen between Gillingham and Blackburn Rovers. Again, it's the same prediction as last time, but here it is.
that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, so please check those babies out. Links to them puppies are in the description below. So, folks, it's back down to Priestfield one more time to take on Gilling, and hopefully for the last time for a good few years because I don't want to be back in this division uh, anytime soon. Uh, we are owed something, or you guys are owed something, the guys who are on the coaches for that long, uh, oh my goodness, what was it? Is it four hours? Four, four hours there, four hours back, something ridiculous. But anyway, you guys have owed something, so hopefully it's three points, maybe even a Bradley Dax special against this old club. I'll be back again after the match with uh, a digest of what went down. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Well, folks, I'm back once again with another, yes, another channel update. It's only been a couple of months since we've reached the 700 subscriber threshold, but we have surpassed the 1,000 subscriber mark. So a big, big thank you to all the new guys who have just jumped on board, but also a massive, massive, massive thank you to some of the original guys who've been here since the get-go. Really appreciate you guys sticking around, and I do hope that I am keeping you entertained and Factually informed. That's right. Uh, to be honest with you, nothing's going to change with the channel except um, we're just. We, I'm actually focusing on some real big projects at the moment. Uh, a real interesting World Cup uh, project that is involving multiple, multiple people. Hopefully, those people will stick by me and uh, come through in the end. Because if so, it could be really interesting. Um, so realistically, the, the future plans are still the same. We're still going to keep up with the Blackburn Rovers content because that's what I love. Uh, and also we're focusing on some football manager stuff. That's dried up a little bit because I've been involved with this World Cup project. It does take a lot of time behind the scenes to get things going. And there's also some other stuff been going on off camera. So that's that's kind of taken its toll a little bit. Uh, and also we're going to kick on forward with the world football. So if you have recently subscribed because of the stickers, I'm going to keep on playing through the stickers until I, at least until I complete the sticker album. So what else have I got for you? I, I was also thinking that maybe, just maybe, depending on you guys out there, if if we want to do a Q&A session, if you guys have got any questions, if, if I can reach 10 different questions from yourselves in the comments section below or via my Twitter feed, uh, we will do a Q&A video. And that means you can ask me anything about Blackburn Rovers. You can ask me anything about my football manager, anything about world football. And you can maybe, just maybe, ask me a couple of personal questions. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what comes through the old uh, filter system. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that, I will do that gladly. And I'll give you guys until maybe 10, 10 days, two weeks. We'll see where we are then. And then we'll, uh, we'll check back and maybe do a Q&A video. Also... Uh, like I said, we're working on a World Cup project. I am on the lookout for some World Cup football fans from countries from around the world. If you are said football fan from around the, around the world, maybe if you're in Russia, maybe if you're in Senegal, maybe you're in Australia, wherever you are in the world, just drop a little comment down in the section below, and, and especially if you want to be part of this project. It does require being on camera, but uh, I don't want, to talk, don't want to give too much away because it is... It's, it's requiring a lot of hard work and I don't want it to slip through my fingers right at the end. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for you. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new and you've stumbled on this channel by accident, hit the subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, all things World Cup 2018, and also all things Football Manager, baby. That's right. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.